The final step in creating the orrery is to actually build the planets. Um, it's a good practice, at least I believe so, to use nature to emulate nature. Um, and as many of you know from uh, looking around on my website, you've seen that I've done a lot of woodworking with uh, exotic woods. And I believe that using wood to model the planets um, can work. If you can imagine the planet uh, Jupiter um, with a sphere made out of uh, th this particular piece of zebra wood, um, you can see how the, uh, the grain pattern of the wood um, matches what Jupiter actually looks like. Um, and likewise with each of the planets, um, this particular wood is, is Cocobolo. Um, this could be used for, you know, Mars possibly. Uh, I have um, canary wood. Possibly be Saturn. We also have uh, olive wood here, which could also be Saturn. The thing with um, with working with with wood is that um, it's nature, so that the grain pattern varies throughout the piece, and depending on where I make the cuts and what section of the wood is used. Um, We'll be in for some surprises because, clear, you know, you can't see inside the piece and see where the grain is running. So this will take some, um, some trial and error, but I think that um, this has the potential to really uh, be an interesting way to, um, to model the planets. Um, this is a piece of uh, Babinga. Which again could be Mars, it could be um, it could be Mercury, uh, but I have certainly have a large selection of wood here and a lot of experimenting I can do. Um, I even got my hands on some driftwood because what is the moon if it's just not a piece of driftwood floating in space? Um, I don't know how driftwood is going to machine when I try to turn it into a. Uh, sphere, but um, it's one of the things that I will experiment with. Um, the, the Earth presents a different problem altogether because we're all very familiar with the way the Earth looks and um, in fact most of us think of it as the, typically as the globe you would see you know on your desk in an office or something. But <clears throat> that's certainly not the way it looks from space. In space, it's covered with um, clouds. Um, and my feeling is that if you tried to, uh, for example, you know, paint the continents on, um, if, it, what, if it didn't come out exactly right, it would look very wrong. So rather than do that, I'm thinking of using these are, these are pen blanks. Um, for people who make pens, they turn the body of the pen out of these. And they're made from acrylic. But they have all sorts of um, swirls of different colors in them. This particular one is, uh, is blue and green. And again, depending on where the, um, Uh, where the sphere is taken from the particular piece, it could very, very well end up looking like, you know, content, uh, you know, green continents against a, a blue ocean. Um, you know, they certainly wouldn't match the real continents, but it would give a, um, you know, the appearance. It would certainly be identifiable as Earth. Um, I've also um, 
gotten pieces of um, the same material that is blue and white. And, um, and this could very well end up looking like, you know, the blue earth um, in, you know, in cloud cover. Um, but again, we won't know until I actually start cutting into this and, and, and making spheres out of it. But um, I'm hopeful that this will um, present some interesting looks. Um, and I'll, uh, I'll make videos of uh, some of my work on the lathe using the radius turner to, uh, to turn some of these and uh, we'll see how we go from here. One thing to keep in mind though, the planets are small. I mean, this is a small aura, you've seen it. It's, um, I mean, the sun, I'm considering using this um, clear acrylic ball. And this is an inch and a half in diameter. And obviously all the planets would have to be considerably smaller than that. Some of them are actually uh, no more than a quarter of an inch in diameter. Uh, so. This is going to present some interesting challenges, but uh, I'm sort of looking forward to it. Before I can mount the blanks for the planets uh, in the lathe, I need to um, you know, create an arbor of some sort for them to um, mount on. So what I'm going to do is just uh, drill a shallow hole here with a, with a Faustner bit and then glue um, this dowel into it, and this is what the dowel is what will go into the uh, chuck on the lathe. That's about all I need. The uh, glue will do the rest of the work. Um, wood glue really holds things together. So, um, what's going on here? See, normally, normally when you turn wood on a lathe, you have the grain running, um, such that the lathe is turning you know, with the grain running parallel to the bed, but that's not going to work with these because we want the grain to simulate the rings on the uh, or the terrain on the planet and when you're using the radius attachment you have to <coughs> drill holes through this axis and those holes are later going to become the um, the support. So in other words, the planet is going to sit this way and this is the proper orientation for the ring. So we're turning it like this um, and then ultimately it'll end up like this. I've glued the, uh, the dowel to the uh, zebra wood blank. Uh, I used uh, tight bond, which is just a very good woodworker's glue. And I clamped it and let it sit overnight just to make sure I had a good bond in there. The first thing I want to do is drill a pilot hole in this end of the blank because the radius turner that we're going to use later to turn this into a sphere can only make uh, one half of a sphere. You then have to flip everything around to, to complete the second half. So you need a mounting uh, hole here. So let me take care of that now. measure across the diagonal here, it's, uh, it's two and a quarter inches because obviously we're starting with a square. Um, 
So if I... If I set the x-axis um, to just touch the part, I can set I can set my x DRO at two and a quarter inches. For these kind of operations, I just use the lathe turning wizards that are built into Mach 3. It took me about 30 seconds to set up a, an OD turning routine that will. Initially, I'm just going to bring this down to an inch and a half uh, diameter. Then I'll take some more measurements and bring it down to its final. Getting down to the final diameter now. I left it about um, ten thousandths more than than it needs to be because I'm going to be doing um, you know sanding later and leave myself some um, some extra wood to be able to sand it down to the final diameter. The next thing I have to do is um, remove the riser block that I needed to get the clearance on, on something this size and then I'll uh, attach the the, uh, the radius cutter and I'll show you how I do that.